picture to the world blanks i've cnc'd a couple more blanks up i've got some labels cast just for this test got my tubes out i've got my label cutting jig that i use that is from p-town subby it's uh not a bad little jig i like it just helps get the label lined up on it my blanks that I use are Sierra Tubes, Gatsby, Monarchs, Diplomats, you know, the whole nine yards. I got these from Chad over at Turner's Warehouse. Big shout out to him. Fast shipping as always. I ordered them, I think, on a Wednesday afternoon, and I had them Saturday morning, so that's awesome. I've got that ready to go. I've got some labels printed up. I'm going to go through some... Stock images I got from my Shutterstock account just for testing. A couple of my own unique originals, a flag, and some gears I might put on it. Some of my favorite artists is uh, Norman Rockwell. Took some prints. These will not be for sale. These will just be for my testing and to show what's possible with the picture in a blank just to give you an idea of what type of pictures I can cast in it and some ideas for it. Um, I've got my Gorilla Glue, not a sponsor, that I use when I'm tubing up the blanks ready to go. And what I use to mix that in, I've got these whole bunch of little laptop memory plastic containers. And they're great little disposable containers for mixing up the Gorilla Glue. And I use a little resin, or not resin, what do they call them? Uh acid brush from Har good old harbor freight also not a sponsor be nice if they were though and of course i also i use the label sizing template also from p-town subby um this one's for the sierra the actual tube size on that is 2.25 by 1.33 inches now when i print mine as you'll see here i actually print a little bit bigger than that when i lay them out they're 1.4 inches wide by 2.4 inches tall just to give me especially on these to give me a little bit extra white space on the top on the bottom of the label to kind of coincide with where it sits within the window. And I'm hoping this is actually in focus for you guys. I can't see my screen. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go through the process of getting a couple of them cut, put on the label itself, and then we'll come back. And I'm also then going to get them glued into the blanks, let them sit overnight so I can then cast them tomorrow and get them ready to go. All right. So the first thing I do is pick out which one of the labels I want to do. And let's start with one of the American flags. And I take the sizing template and kind of get it laid out on it, kind of centered. You want it as straight as you can really get it. And a good old X-Acto knife is the best method I found. It's a slight score. And I'll come back and I'll score the other side. And I come up, score the sides. And now that that's scored, I'll put the knife off to the side. Take the label sizing template off. Of course, get a tube. I haven't even opened this one yet, so let's go ahead and get that open. Get the safety police yelling at me for doing that. Got to have a little bit of fun. Also, a lot of times what I will do, and I didn't think to do it and get it prepped for this time, is I will take these and wipe them down or soak them in a little bit of acetone and then wipe them down just to keep any grease or anything from your fingers from getting on there. I just recently cleaned the hand, so I know that they're clean, so I'm not going to worry about that right at the moment. So then what I'll do is I'll go ahead, and I'll do one at a time just so you don't get caught up. Did I not score this one enough? And of course I didn't. So <laughs> what I will do now is I will come back, and I will do it a second time, because apparently that first time was just for show. We've all been there. It's a brand new blade, too, so that should have scored it. Almost cut through it, but. Let's go ahead and give it another. Maybe a little bit more pressure today. Make it a happy little label. There we go. And of course, that time I went too much on it, but that's. That's okay. We'll get it. Get it peeled off. And now everybody's got a different method for doing this, and it's whatever works for you 
I'll take it and I will hold it just gingerly, just right in the corner here. I hope you can see that. I'll take my weight, the tube, press it against the side, drop it onto it. And now that I've got it, I'll come off to the side just so I can get my fingers and really get that seam down. Firm pressure while rolling and get that right on there. So you can see that time I was off and you'll have that happen. So what I will do now is this one. This label gets peeled off. This blank goes, this blank, this tube will go off to the side to get soaked and cleaned in acetone before using it again. Uh, flag goes on the pressure pot. That's what I get for rushing, but hey, why well, edit it out? We'll just go ahead and keep that right in there because everybody makes mistakes. It's not hard to do on these either because they're such a tight tolerance. So let's go ahead and try that one more time, shall we? Again, score it. Now, one of the things that's on my my list, I guess we'll put it that way, to pick up is a uh, surcut. I have a lot of history in large format printing, vinyl sign making, ran a wholesale sign shop for a while. So I would love to just have this set up to actually do a die cut and come right out of the printer ready to go for me. So that's one thing I know a lot of people actually use as well. And that makes it really easy. I've got to do it manually still by hand. Let's see if I can't pull this off and get it to actually line up this time. That looks better except for the ripple. Figures do it 10,000 times, no problem. Do it on camera and mess it up every single time, it seems. Try it one more time. Because you want to make sure it's straight. Because if it's not straight, it will show on the tube. I'm not liking that one either. As you can see, I've got a, I've got a gap. I don't know why that is here. That's one more for the. Do it later. Let's try that one more time here. Now, like I said, and I've been doing this a while, so. You're just starting out doing label casting. Do not get discouraged. Because if it was that easy, everyone would be doing it. A little bit of practice makes perfect. And even I've probably cast over, I don't know, 500 or so blanks. And every now and then still, the pressure is still getting to me doing an actual YouTube video for it. So I'm getting nervous as, as well. If this one doesn't go any better, though, I think I'm going to blame the tubes and I'm going to send Chad an email. And of course, if you're watching this, Chad, I am completely kidding. This is completely user error. Let's see how we've got this one now. There we go. That's better. That's what it should look like. So the first two of those were practice runs to show by error what not to do. And then what I will do is come through. You see here we've got just, I print it long on purpose. And now here's the important part. You don't want to saw into the label itself. Sharp blade. I'll come into the blunt to the label and just slice. And sl you know, and just kind of come back around. And it trims it right up, right down to the tube. Which is exactly what you want. And now if anybody's wondering, the labels that I use, they're matte waterproof labels from online label, and I don't remember offhand the product number, but I will link that in the description if anybody wants to give them a try. And then there we go. Now, kind of come through and burnish the end. When I'm doing card blanks or anything a little bit sticker that's not a label, I'll a lot of times come back through with a little paintbrush and a little bit of CA. It just coat that seam. But with this, and I still might end up doing that before casting it. I'm not sure yet. Just with the humidity that's in the air today, I might. So let's do, I think, 
I don't know, some gears inside a window frame on a blank might look pretty cool. So let's do one of some gears. Figure why not? And it's, you know, the same process repeated. And the tubes themselves, those are cheap. Um, I want to say 25 of them was like 12 1250 something like that from Turner's Warehouse and that's a great deal for them because you'll go through them especially if you start label casting and again same thing is kind of get it into the corner of the jig drop the tube on seal that side very well and then roll it tight and a nice seam and then of course come back and clean up that edge. And you'll end up with little shavings of label all over the place, but that's how you know you did something throughout the day. Coffee stains and label shards, that's a great combination. And then one more. to see what a picture looks like inside one of those we will do a little Norman Rockwell this one will become one of my everyday carry pens like I said never want to sell any copyrighted images or images you do not have explicit permission to reproduce and sell it's an easy way to get yourself in a lot of trouble and I would never advocate doing that. So this one is one just for me because he is one of my favorite painters. And there, that one's all sealed up as well. And trim up the edge. I'll come up here in a second. I'll get you a, a close up of the edge and what it should look like when you're done. And that one is dead on within there. So that's perfect. Sorry for the hand in the frame there. And in there. See a nice edge. The seams are basically non-existent. Except on the white one because it is a picture. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and I'm gonna move my cutting platform out of the way. And what I'm using here, this is just, I don't remember where. I will put a link for it as well. Oh, there is a name on it. It's a Vantage cutting mat. Got this also from Amazon. I'll put a link down below for this one. It's a great self-healing cutting mat. Had it now eight months. and It works really well, I want to say. No more than $15. I don't remember offhand, but I said I'll put that link down in the description and add that to it. Now the thing I've got to do is grab A brush because I did not think to grab a brush. Now, when I say acid brushes, what I'm referring to is the 36 piece. I picked these up at, like I said, Harbor Freight. Not a sponsor. They are item 61880. They're like three bucks or something. I don't remember, but. They're great little brushes for this type of work. I use them for glue. Uh, if I've got a paint the inside of one of my tubes for casting it with the acrylic paint, they're a perfect size. Just get right down in the tube and paint the tube as well. They're awesome for that. And now, seeing and making sure that I've gotten my holes big enough on the blank. Because now, these are drilled with a 2664. I believe that's the Sierra size. I may be mistaken. Let me double check on that real quick. I don't want to give wrong information here. 13, 30 seconds. 27, 60, that'd be a big hole. <laughs> but they're drilled just perfectly for the tube. So when you go to put a tube into it, I'll use one of the other ones. It's got glue on it, so I don't contaminate a new one. They fit just perfect. And I can see already now the outside of that one, I've got a little bit of play, but my inside diameter, it's really snug. So 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to have to pause the video, and i got to go widen this hole a little bit to be able to get that in there with the tube, but I will be back. So I went ahead and I've gotten the openings a little bit thicker so I can slide the tube in. This one I could have went a little bit bigger on, but that'll work. And any of you astute viewers may notice here there's a couple other things that are different. I trim off the edges of the blank just so it's not label only glued into the tube because that's a very weak bond. So I'll trim it back a little bit just to the brass. Of course, I don't film that because it's just scoring it with a razor knife and peeling it off. I do have ideas to somehow make a jig that I can just roll it through like with a pipe cutter. And that might actually work. And you can see now that I am sporting a very high fashionable band-aid, not a sponsor, not a brand. I'm on the hand because opening these holes back up gets a little dicey sometimes. So... But what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and get them glued into the tubes and get them set back up. For that, I use Gorilla Glue. Anytime I'm doing a label cast, a hybrid, well, anything other than probably a slimline or something, I can just shove the tube in really quick. I use Gorilla Glue for just about all my glue-ups now that I think about it. Gives you a little bit more working time. It's, I think, a stronger bond. But most importantly, it gives you an additional few minutes of working time where a CA if you're not paying attention can get away from you and with any two-part epoxy it's just squeeze it out and of course this one the tube doesn't like to give out part B I'll mix up a generous amount kind of enough to cover both pull it back and I get that out of the way off camera, you can't see me, but I'm grabbing one of my great tongue depressors, which I will then use to thoroughly mix the epoxy. It's, no, this is boring to a lot of people. It's just your typical label cast. This is just kind of the process as I go through. But with these window ones, it's a little bit tricky getting the glue in to seal because you can't just put it in on one side like you normally do with a tube and then slide that tube all the way through the glue all over the label so what i tend to do there then let me grab this one i'll take the acid brush and i'll get some glue on that and i'll come inside on the opposite side and just kind of slather that with And once I do that, I can start to get this in. And then I'll come back and just on this edge. Get some glue on there as well. Now, of course, you somebody might be looking at this going, oh my God, that's not enough glue. Technically, no, maybe not. But remember, this is going to be cast as well. So... There is going to be a lot of resin surrounding it. And once I get it on, I will come back and just kind of clean up that edge a little bit. And I'll also kind of eyeball and make sure I've got it roughly where I want it within the blank. Normally I use a punch for this part, but I didn't grab one to bring over to this bench. So I'm using a beat up number two. that off and then set that one off to the side and I'm going to go ahead and get the the other two glued up and then we're going to call this a I think a video it's a good enough video for today and then the next time I come back we'll get again I'll get these cast and ready to go and hopefully then in the next couple days by the next video we'll turn a couple of these and see how they come out and see exactly what the hoopla is about these window to the world blanks and 
And if you guys see something here you like or you'd like one made, go ahead and drop me a either a comment here, send me a message here on the good old YouTubes. You can find me also on Instagram and Twitter under True Turnings, or you can also check out the Facebook page, True Turnings, at the good old the Facebook. Uh, of course, this one's going to be a little bit tighter to go in. There we go. Get her in there all the way. And that's basically your glue up. It's nothing major there, no, no trade secrets or anything like that. It's a rather simple process. And it's not that hard. But like any epoxy, take your time, go with it. And so I'm just cleaning up the window itself from my widening the hole. And then with any epoxy, they say it's, I don't know, what is this, five minute epoxy, 10 minute? I don't know, sets in, says it sets in five minutes, which is pretty close, especially when it's warm like it is now. A full cure on this though, I usually like, I'll do these for whether I'm doing, you know, a window blank like this, or if I'm doing a general label cast, or if I'm doing a hybrid, or just a regular pen blank as well. I normally will go ahead and let this sit up overnight just to get a really nice cure on it. The other one doesn't want to go in all the way. So what I would do there is set it down, put some pressure on it. This one's going to be a little bit more difficult, it appears. In this case, cheat. Like Adam Savage says, anything's a hammer if you need it to be. And there we go. Those are set up now, ready to go. Uh, like I said, I will let them cure overnight. And then I'll set them on a piece of paper. Get a blue chop towel for them. I'll let those sit up and cure overnight now and pull them out tomorrow, get them ready to go, and get them cast.